Consider the following problem. How many groups are there of order exactly four? That is, groups with four elements. Now, uh, depending on what, how much theory you want to use, there can be different ways to answer this question. But now, here, I want to focus on the most concrete and explicit way to solve this, which is write down explicitly the list of all the groups. And this I want to do by writing down the multiplication table of these groups. So before we start to write down explicitly all these multiplication tables, uh, let's make a basic and fundamental observation about multiplication tables. And this is the following. In any multiplication table of a group, uh, on any line of a multiplication table, each element of the group appears exactly once, only one time. More uh, concretely, this is what I mean. Suppose I have here some multiplication, multiplication table of a group with the element listed E, A, B, C, and so on. Now suppose I have the, the product of an element A and another element B is equal to Z but also that the element A multiplied by another element C is also equal to Z. In other words, here in the table, uh, this element Z appears twice in the row of A in the table. Well, now looking at these two equations, if I multiply on the left by the inverse element of A, then what I get is that B has to be equal to C. And this is clearly absurd. Another way to express this fact more, maybe a bit more sophisticated, is to say that on each uh, row of the multiplication table there, there is a permutation of the elements of G. Of course, the, say, the same statement holds for uh, the columns of this table. So let's move on now and list all the possible groups with exactly four elements. Here I have a multiplication table with, uh, of a group with four elements, of which one, of course, we know has to be the identity element E. Now, for the first row and the first column, uh, we have not much choice, since the, we know how the identity element has to act on the other elements, namely as an identity. Now, for the product A times A, we have to make a choice. And uh, now I will choose that A times A is equal to the identity. And I will keep track of my choice by drawing, for example, a decision tree. where the first node corresponds to the choice a square is equal to e. So in the row of a here, um, we see that we now have to fill in two other elements, namely b and c, but we cannot fill in b here because otherwise in this column, there would be uh, the element B repeated twice, and this violates our observation. Therefore, it has to be C. And by the same principle, here we have no other choice than putting the element B. By just the same mechanism here, we have no choice than having C and B on this side. And we are left with completing this small square. Now, for the product b times b, again I have to make a choice, and I will choose again that b times b is equal to the identity element e. And I will keep track this again on my decision tree. Now, we see that there are no other possibilities that filling up a in this uh, case and similarly, A 
and E here. So this is the group, the multiplication group number one. So let's move on now and fill in the table for group number two. Of course, the first line and first column are the same, since the identity element always acts the same in any group. Now, for a square, uh, let's move on this decision tree uh, in the same direction here. So again, we choose that a square is equal to e. Um, and this, as we remember, forces the other choices. But now, in this point, we take another direction in the decision tree, namely, b square is different from e. If b square is different from e, then the inverse of b has to be c, that is, b times c has to be equal to e. And there is no other choice than having an a here, and for the same reason, we have to have e and a. And this is the table for group number two. So now let's move on. Let's uh, uh, delete some stuff here and proceed to write down the table for the third group of order four. Now, of course, we are now going into this direction in the decision tree, that is, a square is different from the identity. So this means that in this line here uh, of a, we have to choose another inverse for the element a. Let me choose b, that is, a times b is equal to e. Now, of course, the identity, whenever you have the identity element, uh, this acts both on the right and on the left on an element. That is, if a times b is equal to e, it means that b and a are inverses of each other, and so also b and a, their, their product is equal to e. This means that the element e, whenever it appears on the table, it is, has to be symmetrical with respect to the diagonal. So here we also have E. Going back to the line, to the row of A, there are no other choices here than putting B here and C here. For the same reason, here we have to put a B, and on the row of B, we see that uh, here we cannot put... Um, we have to fill in with a and c, but c cannot be in the last case, so it has to be here, otherwise it would be repeated twice on this column, and therefore here is a, and for the same reason, here we have a, and here e. So this is the multiplication table of the third group that we find. Now we move on to complete the table for the fourth group. Here, as we chose previously, uh, the inverse for a equal to e, we have to go down now this branch of the decision tree and choose a, dif a different inverse element for a. Namely, we can only choose c. For the same reasoning as, as above, now also c times a has to be equal to e. And here, there is no other way to complete this table than filling up with b, c here, e, a here, a, and again. E, uh, sorry, B, in this last case. 
So this is the table of group 4. Now going back to our original problem, we might be tempted to uh, say that there are exactly four groups of order 4, since after all we found four multiplication tables, right? However, this is not correct. In fact, as we know, two different multiplication tables might correspond actually to the same group by uh, relabeling of the elements. So, in order to proceed, we have to now carefully analyze these tables and uh, in order to study the specific properties of these groups and find out whether we don't have more than one table corresponding to the same group. So let's start with table number one. By looking at this table, the first thing we notice is that the identity element is all along the diagonal. In other words, the element A, B and C are all of order 2. From this property, we immediately deduce, deduce that the group cannot be cyclic because if it were cyclic, then it would have to be generated by either A, B or C. However, this is not possible since the square would be the element. And so the group generated by these elements cannot be equal to the whole group. The name of this group is Klein 4. And it is, uh, this comes from German, Kleinsche Vierre Gruppe. It can also be described precisely as the smallest non cyclic group. Now let's move on and uh, take a look at table 2. Also here we have an element A, which is of order 2. However, B and C are not of order 2, and in fact we see that they are inverse of each other. Namely, B times C is the identity. Uh, I claim that B generates a group. In fact, we have b power 1, which is b, b square, which is equal to a, and b cube, which is equal, well, I could write it as a times b, which is equal from the table, a times b is equal to c, and then, of course, b to the fourth power is equal to the identity. Therefore, what we found is the cyclic group of order 4, C4. Now some uh, natural representations or incarnations, concrete incarnations of this group uh, are, for example, the numbers plus minus 1 and plus minus i as a subgroup of the circle group or if you want as a subgroup of the multiplication group of complex numbers in other words we can visualize these elements as lying on this circle so the four elements one minus one i and minus i another uh, obvious incarnation is of course Z4 as an additive group or and so this would be uh, generated by the element 1 additive powers uh, or if you want 
the multiplicative group of Z5, which has four elements, and this would be generated, for example, by three, the powers of three. Table number three. Uh, again, we observe that there is an element C, which is uh, of order two, and the other two elements, which are not the identity, A and B, are inverse of each other. So the situation is symmetrical, is exactly uh, the same as the previous table, up to a relabeling of these elements. In other words, we have found nothing new. This is the cyclic group of order 4, C4. For table number 4, the situation is exactly the same. Namely, we have one element B of order 2, and then A and C uh, are of order 4, so either one of them would generate the group. So, that was it. We only have two groups of order 4, the cyclic, cyclic group of order 4, C4, and the Klein 4 group.